just for the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. Before we present tonight's exciting adventure, we have a message of interest for you all. Hi-o silver, hi! With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Well, Donald, the ranch hasn't changed a bit. No, Kimasabi. I'll be anxious to see our old friend, Joe Crawford. Ah, ranch cook Tom make best coffee in the country. <laughs> Anybody there? Oh, Tom. Tom Peters. What do you want? Howdy. We're looking for Mr. Crawford. He's no friend of ours. He's not here. He's sold out. The new owner doesn't like strangers trespassing, especially anyone who wears a mask. Get going. Well, when did Joe sell the place? I'm not answering any questions. Get. Mind telling us where he moved to? Garvin told you we're not getting paid to answer questions. Hey, what's this? A masked man and an Indian. Uh, what do you want? We look for... We told you Joe Crawford isn't here. Get back to your cook stove, Tom. Yes, and I'm getting mighty curious about that mask, too. You're not the first one. Thanks, Tom. You just sit right down there. What's going on around here, Tom? Well, sir, I don't know. Except that Mr. Crawford rode off about a week ago heading for Leesville. Said he had some business to take care of. And you know, I ain't seen hide or hear of him since. What about him selling this place? Oh, that ain't so. Why, he wouldn't sell this place without telling me something about it. <laughs> I've been with him ever since his daughter Molly was born. Who two men we talked to? A couple of gunslingers, if you're asking me. Claim that they're working for the new owner. <laughs> they tried to drive me off of the place, too. But I ain't a-leaving. No, sir. Not until the boss tells me what's what. Now, hold on, Tom. Shooting isn't the way to settle this. Did Joe tell you what he was going to town for? No. All he said was, I'll be back by the time my daughter Molly comes from boarding school. Oh, when's that? Well, let me see. Say, that's today. Him wait in Leesville. Bring daughter home from stage office. Well, maybe so. But it's darn funny that he didn't send me some sort of a message. Well, we'll wait until Joe gets back. Father? Tom? It's Miss Molly. Who's that with her? Pinto Brown. He's a fellow who said he bought this place. Me see him Leesville. Him play cards in saloon. Don't say anything about us being here. Right. Tom, it's nice to oh, see you. Ted, look at you, Miss Molly. Why, well, you're even prettier than you was last year. I expected Father to meet me in Leesville. Mr. Brown said he'd probably be home. Father! Father, it's me. Oh, he's not here, Miss Molly. But I don't understand. And Mr. Brown says Father stole the place to him. Well, I don't know any more about it than you do, but I don't believe it. We'll do much better without your opinions, Tom. Everything's in order, Miss Molly. 
Here's a triplicate copy of the bill of sale signed by your father. Let me see that. That belongs to Miss Crawford. Well, I can read it, can't I? Don't you worry about a thing. I'm going to see what this is all about. I'm sorry to rush you, but I'll want to move in shortly. Well, you won't do it. Because we're not going to move until Joe Crawford comes back and tells us to leave. I suggest you keep quiet, Tom. It's unfortunate that your father never wrote to you about this. I'm telling you... Please, Tom, as soon as I freshen up, we'll go into town and try to locate Father. Something must have delayed him. Oh, in the meantime, Miss Molly, I hope we won't have any trouble about this. There won't be any trouble, Mr. Brown. You can pack your things, too. I was considering keeping... You don't have to consider any longer, because I just quit five minutes ago. Tom. Oh, there you are. That pole cat. Here, take a look at this. Now, you know Joe's handwriting, don't you? Did he put his name on it? Yes, that's Joe's signature, all right. Hmm. And it could be that this Jasper ain't lying after all. You think that paper legal? Looks legal to me. Tyler, you ride over to Leesville. See if you can find Joe. Me go. Otato, if he's no place around, find out who saw him last. Meet me at our camp. Huh. Hmm. You know, this beats anything I've ever seen. What do you know about this Pinto Brown? Well, not much, except he hangs around Leesville, does a little gambling. Have you ever been over here to look the property over? No, he ain't. And if you had been, I'd have seen him. Or at least why Joe would have told me about it. I agree with you, Tom. It doesn't make sense, Joe, selling this place. Why, his daughter Molly was born here. Yeah, and his wife's buried right over there in that grove. Oh, no, no. He wouldn't have sold this place. Is it possible Joe had some money trouble you knew nothing about? Why, no. I know as much about his affairs as he does. We'll have to be careful, Tom. This whole thing may be perfectly legal. Well, what are you going to do? I'll keep this bill of sale for the time being. I'll see you later. Nobody in Leesville sees Joe since more than a week. And he didn't sign that bill of sale in Leesville. It was dated just four days ago. How we find him, Kimosabi? He still may be on his own ranch, alive or dead. Well, where we look? We'll try the line cabins first. Let's go. What we do now? There's one more cabin over to the south. We look in three cabins already. We find spider and plenty dust. <laughs> You're right. Tato, look. Near the rock. Someone's been digging. On, Silver. Look like brave. We'll soon find out. This rock contains gold. Ah. Joe Crawford's Bar C brand on these tools. Now we know why Brown want ranch. Him want gold. Right, Tano. We'll look at that Southland cabin now. Come on. People had a meal here and not long ago. Them live here, too. Yes, but only two sleep here. That must be two men who work for Pinto Brown. Keep watch outside, Tano. I wouldn't want to be caught here. What you find, Kimasabi? It's a letter from Joe Crawford. Dated yesterday. It's to old Tom. Listen to this. Dear Tom, I was aiming to surprise you and Molly, but I got mixed up in something. I can't get home for a couple of weeks. Meet Molly at the stage for me. Tell her I'm feeling fine and don't worry. Your old friend, Joe Crawford. How let her get here? I don't know, Tonto. But one thing is certain. Tom never received this letter. Why, somebody steal it? Well, that's what puzzles me. But at least it proves Joe was alive 24 hours ago. Let her not say him sell ranch. No, but I'm sure he's in some serious trouble. 
It seems that Mr. Brown was the last known person to have talked to Joe. Let's call on him at Leesville. Brown and the town marshal. That saves us a long ride. Mm, them headed to ranch house. Come on, Tonham. Please, Tom, put away that gun. Now, we're not going to leave here. I'm going to town. Come along with me. Now, look, we don't have to, because I've got a couple of friends that's going to help us out. Friends? Yeah. Please. Oh, all right. Come in. Howdy, Miss Molly. It's nice seeing you again, Marshal. Nice seeing you, too. I wish you were under happier circumstances. Well, I've known you and your father for years and I have a very unpleasant duty to perform. I have to serve you with an eviction notice. Mr. Brown here wants to take possession at once. Now? Before I even see my father? What? Why, where will she go? I'm sure I don't know. I'm sorry about this, but my plans have been suddenly changed. Now, nobody can tell me that Joe sold him this place, and we're not getting off. According to law, Miss Molly, you've been served. If you're not gone from here in 24 hours, he'll have to come back and forcibly evict you. I wish there was something I could do. Well, we're not leaving. And as for you, you won't refer it. Hold it, Tom. Who are you? What business do you have here? He's a friend of mine. Friend? Wearing a mask? It serves a purpose. Mr. Brown, you must admit there's something strange about the sale of this property. I'll admit nothing. And you'll do well to stay out of this. Miss Molly? You and Tom stay here another 24 hours. This sort of thing will get you nowhere, Miss Crawford. I think I'll let my friends answer that for me. All right. Don't worry, Miss Molly. You'll hear from me. Not the same writing? J is the same. Long loop. Curly Q on top of the C is the same. O's and D's are alike. Looks like Joe Crawford really signed these. Uh, then maybe Brown buy ranch after all. I can't believe it. Yet here it is, signed exactly the, exactly the same twice. Every line, every shading is alike. One's been traced over the other. Then Joe not signed bill of sale. Maybe Brown tried to kill him. According to this letter, he was alive two days ago. And that's after this bill of sale was signed. Him someplace where he could mail a letter. We not know where. Penno Brown knows. He kept Tom from receiving this letter. You think Brown tried to kill Crawford? He has to, Tom, to protect himself. He forged his name to this bill of sale. What we do? We've got to get to Joe before Brown does. Where we look? Well, let Mr. Brown tell us that. Him not talk to you, Kima Sabi. He won't know he's talking to me, Tom, in my disguise. Howdy, boys. It's about time you got here. Now, what do you want? Action. We're tired of holding up in this dirty shack and eating rotten food. We don't like the idea of that masked man mixing into this either. Ah, forget it. You'll be sleeping in the Bar C bunkhouse tomorrow night. You should have let us take care of Crawford as soon as you filed that deed. It wasn't necessary. What can he do? I've got his signature on the sales papers. Besides, I don't especially care for murder. Well, it would look kind of bad, him dropping out of sight right after he sold his place. Certainly. I'll take care of this. Where do you think you're going? None of your business, young feller. You're on private property. Get. Sure, I'll be leaving. But I'm looking for a man named Tom Peters. What about him? What about him? <laughs> Nothing. I just got a letter for him. Oh, Tom Peters. Well, why didn't you say so? He's inside. I'll give it to him. Oh, no, you don't. I keep my promises. I'm supposed to give this to Tom Peters himself. And that's what I aim to do. Well, all right, come on. Mr. Peters, this old man has a message for you. You Tom Peters? Yes. Uh, 
If you have a letter for me, give it to me. Sure. Well, did what I was supposed to do. Guess I'll be leaving. Hold it. Where'd you get this? Oh, fellow down the road a piece gave it to me. I got paid for it, too. <laughs> what do you look like? Oh, not too thin and <laughs> not too fat. Say, you ought to know who he is. He went to you. Get him out of here. Well, who's writing to old Tom? Joe Crawford. It's a good thing we caught it. What's he say? Listen, dear Tom, I'll be getting home sooner than I told you in my last letter. I'm leaving here today. I've been tricked. Give my love to Molly, Joe Crawford. Leaving today? How can he? That's what we're going to find out. Kimusabi, you fool them? Yes, Tano. Even Mr. Brown himself. We'll head for Needle Rock as soon as I get rid of this disguise. This is the pass. Now, you get up above, and if I miss him in town, you get him here and hide the body. Kind of changed your mind about killing, eh? Circumstances changed my mind. We're too close to possession of that property to let anything interfere with our plans. Don't worry. You won't get by us. Brown's going on alone. Looked like him left other two men for ambush. Him not take road to Leesville. No, he's taking the road to Silver Gulch. Let's go. Hello, Sheriff. Well, hello, Mr. Brown. Just passing through Silver Gulch, thought I'd stop in and ask about Crawford. What about him? He's in his cell. Well, I understand you're letting him out today, before his 10 days are up. No, he'll sit it out in there all right. <laughs> he created quite a ruckus over in Murphy's saloon. <laughs> he wrecked the place. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Don't let him get out of town. No, he stay here, watch his horse. Who are you? Friend of Joe Crawford's. Do many of Joe's friends wear masks? I think you'd better explain, mister. Take me to Joe Crawford and you'll understand, Sheriff. Right through that door. Hey, Joe, wake up. Jeff here says he's a friend of yours. Hello, Joe. Well, he certainly is. <laughs> Never so glad to see anybody in my life. Now, maybe I can get out of here. Supposing you calm down, Joe. Let me hear your side of the story. Well, I... I come over here to Silver Gulch on the quiet about a week ago. Brought a sample of ore for assay. We don't have any assay offices in Leesville. We had a good report on it and went out celebrating. Is that right? Pretty close, only I didn't get to celebrate. We went over to Murphy's Saloon. We? Yeah. Well, who's the other party? The assayer. He was a friendly sort of a cuss. Seemed tickled at my good luck. Yes, I bet he was. Who else was in the saloon? Oh, slew of folks I never saw, and this uh, Pinto Brown critter. I've seen him around Leesville, but I never liked his cut. So you pulled a gun on him? I've been telling you over and over. I never even spoke to the lion skunk. Go ahead with your story, Joe. Well, I, uh, I just sat down to eat when, wham, something hit me over the head, and I come to here. Murphy and Brown said they picked a pipe of Brown, smashed up the saloon, and had to be laid out cold. The ass air backed them up. Need a little frame up all the way, Sheriff. Might have been at that. But why? Because Pinto Brown says you sold him the Bar C Ranch. That's a lie. Wait till I get my hands on that mangy coyote. Sheriff, you gotta let me out of here so I can find Brown. No need of that, Joe. Sheriff, what is this? The mask man. What's this lie about me selling you my ranch? I have your signature on the bill of sale. You have not. Yes, he has, Joe. But you didn't sign it. Brown, you stole the signatures from a letter Joe wrote old Tom. You're planning to kill Crawford. Don't be insane. 
just because I make a good buy from a crazy rancher. You thief. Hold on, Joe. There's another way of settling this. Sheriff, I demand that you arrest these two bandits. This murder business. That's a pretty serious charge, mister. We can make it stick, Sheriff. Brown, you took a letter from an old man yesterday. How did you know? Huh! Your name Tom Peters? Well, that was you. That's right, Brown. The letter told you Crawford was coming home sooner than you expected. But you came here just to make sure. But you didn't take any chances. You left an ambush back on the trail at Needle Rock, just in case Joe had already left for home. An ambush? What about that, Brown? Oh, it's a plain lie. T take a posse out there and find out. Not a posse, Sheriff. A party led by Mr. Brown. <laughs> I'm perfectly willing to waste the time just to put an end to this. We'll try that. Just one more thing, Sheriff. Have Mr. Brown and Mr. Crawford change clothes and horses. All right, men, start changing clothes. There's Needle Rock, Brown. You go on alone. Wait a minute. Let him get a little closer. He's trying to get away. Come on. What are you trying to pull? We came near shooting you for Crawford. Yeah, I know. The, the masked man made me change clothes with Crawford and forced me to ride into my own trap. That's all we need to hear, Brown. All right, now. Get on your horses. Thanks to our friends, we can celebrate the gold strike on our property. By the way, Joe, I suggest you do all your celebrating at home. And not in Murphy's saloon. <laughs> Don't worry, Dad will never get out of my sight again. Nor mine either. And speaking of celebrating, come on in the kitchen. I whipped up a little something. Fine. Come on, boys. Why, they're leaving. Dad, Tom said the masked man was a friend, so I accepted him. But who is he? Ask Tom. Him? Why, he's the Lone Ranger. Will the Lone Ranger triumph as he fights on for justice, law, and order? Be sure to be with us again next week at the same time when General Mills brings you another thrilling adventure with the Lone Ranger.